I disagree with that thing about it's being the first coup d'etat. I know people say that, but it's kind of, it's actually sort of the wrongest way you can look at it in a funny way because that, that coup d'etat that people are talking about began in, you know, 1868 with the exact same playbook, um, you know, racial massacre to instill fear black Republican politicians and white Republican politicians pushed out of their positions, white Democrats or white supremacists, you know, put in. That just kind of keeps happening. In some ways, Wilmington is, is like the last place it reaches. It's the, if you want to see it as the, as the perfection of that coup d'etat, you know, the, the point at which the South essentially makes clear in stone that that you know we will we'll do what we what we need to do to maintain white supremacy and the federal government says okay as long as long as you kill the right people you know don't kill any white people but otherwise you can <clears throat> you can do what you have to do what happened here in 1998 in 1898 there was a um, there was a violent race massacre here uh, literally right here where we're standing, the cemetery where black people ran to hide is just, um, you, know, uh, you know, you could practically throw a rock to it from here. But um, the, the I'm trying to think of how to give the context without going on and on in a tedious way, you had, you had fusion politics happening. Okay, fusion politics is a phenomenon of the 1890s in North Carolina. It had happened other places earlier, not not to as great an extent in the sense that those earlier attempts at fusion politics had not had much success. But here in North Carolina, the the power and um, and the and the um, uh, success of the of the fusionist party becomes a really important factor in in state politics and national politics to an extent. You know, it, in the way that fusion politics played out, you can see that triangle that we're talking about. You know, that this was, in some ways, it's one of the most perfect laboratories for observing that, that dynamic. You know, it, it's, it happens in very naked terms. You have the Republican Party, you know, which is, which is where, you know, where blacks have a huge influence. You have the white supremacist Democratic Party wanting to keep the power structure in place. And you have... Um, you know, working class whites in this populist party who are now joining together with black voters. And, and it's, it's about to happen. It seems like it's about to happen, so it can't be allowed to happen. So the Democrats have to take Wilmington, which is the seat of fusionist power. They almost have to kind of sack this city um, to take it back for white supremacy. And they do it. In, in, in 1898, they very carefully orchestrate um, a propaganda campaign. Um, you know, because they, they completely control the media, of course. And, um, and uh, uh, you know, organizing, they're going around the state, organizing white leagues, sort of proto Ku Klux Klan, you know, white um, militant organizations, you know, they're, they're making these very careful chess moves with their eyes on the election in November, which they're going to steal brazenly, you know. Um, and when, when the time comes, they have the election and, and they win, you know, they, they, they take the victory. They've terrified the Republicans into staying home on voting day with all of these demonstrations of paramilitary activity and shit like that. And um, they take the election. And then this is what's a little bit weird is that the, the um, massacre actually happens a couple of days later. So they've, they've already won the election, you know. Leading up to it, the thought had been, that a massacre is going to attend the, the political victory, you know. Um, that's what people have been afraid of. But no, the election passes, all is calm, and then a couple of days later, that's when the violence, the real violence begins because so much um, rage and excitement 
and frustration has been whipped up among the working class white community um, that, uh, that, that they, they expend it on, on black people, in some cases on their own neighbors. And there, there was a day when a real massacre happened. Nobody knows how many people died. Some, I mean, the newspapers said eight, I think, or 13. And, and the, but, but the memories of some of the people who witnessed it, you know, some of those people said 250, you know, so there's no way of knowing it was unacceptable, whatever it was. And, um, but, but, but an important thing to remember about 1898, in some ways the most important thing from looking at it, um, you know, through the lens of historical cause and effect is that, um, is that it's really about 1900. You know, 1900 is when they disfranchise black voters in the state almost entirely. But, but they have to win that battle of 1898 first and essentially squash the fusion experiment as, as it had been happening in Wilmington and a few other places. That has to be accomplished before they can ride forward to 1900 when they reestablish white supremacy as the political mode. And that, that has lasted, you know, I'm not even sure it's totally over in this state, you know.